the easiest thing, the accomplishment you can have as a child because it requires no skill set except right. sperm and an egg. Well, I think that's why so many young girls get knocked up. And they up get knocked up they, because they that's a sense of accomplishment. I right. Mean, it's they can do something good, right. right? They can do something well. Yeah. And they know and that it gives you significance and, it, and, and it gives them unconditional love. Like, yeah. I'm going to be loved. This child's going to love me. At least something, someone loves me. Right. But they might not because but they, they might not. resent. But, but we don't, right. We my mom and I fall like cats and dogs because I was like, you brought me into this world. And then there comes the teen years. Ooh. Yeah, we fall like cats and dogs i'm like how can brought me here i have a question for you guys because this is this is something that's that is uh big for me with my friends with kids how often do you find yourself wanting to say something about their parenting skills (laughs) and you have to zip it because you know out of fear that they're going to say you don't have kids you don't know what you're talking about or you don't have kids to shut your mouth or you don't have kids so you don't understand you just have to mind your own business that you just have to assume that that's going to be, you know, the same thing. You go to a you go to a gym and you see somebody lifting weights wrong. You're like, hey, can I show you how to properly do those lat pull downs? Yeah, but you're experienced. You're a trainer, but you're not a mom. But I'm just saying, and someone will just be like, <laughs> mind your own business. So you, I mean, with something as yes. innocuous as as like helping someone with technique. You know, to me, it's just common sense. Yeah. I don't think you have to be a mom or a parent to understand what what good judgment is and what common sense is. And That's the funny thing about common sense is it's not so common. Well, I know that with my husband because we used to argue yes, about how yes. to deal with, you know. I his, see some of yeah. my married friends, uh, particularly my single mom friends, mm-hmm. make just egregious mistakes. I mean, the kind that I just have to go, oh, I, I got to just <laughs> shut my mouth because I can't. I and and I'll and I'll question them in a way that's not confrontational because mm-hmm. they get very defensive, you know, of course. if you call them on their parenting skills. Oh, and, and they're I'll, gonna protect that you child sort of have like to there's go no in tomorrow. the back door way right. to to say, Are are you sure you should be talking about dad, you know, the your ex like that, maybe. Well, I have to be very it careful might not with my, my own husband. It might not be a good idea to, to, to bad mouth right. your ex in front of your well, kid. Oh, right. yeah, I had but a lot I, of that. I like, had to do that with my husband when I, you know, he'd ask me my opinion on something. We were dealing with an issue with his son or, you know, there was something going on. I had to be very careful how I addressed it because it's a very touchy subject to them. Yes, it is. You know, it so you can't is. just, you know, I knew what I thought was wrong and I saw the correction but if he didn't believe in it on his, uh, you know, the parents, you you can't really, you know, I, you have no um, power to enforce anything. And you know what the result's going to be. And you're like, Arr. yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, and I think also by virtue of the fact that um, my parents were divorced. I mean, I saw it. I went through it. Oh, your parents I mean, you know, were Just divorced. because I'm not a parent yeah. doesn't mean that I don't have some insight and some. Well, you've been there. I, it, so yeah. that's how wisdom. I would, And so, yeah, I saw it. I know, I know, even though I don't have kids, I know what not to do. That's your entree right there. Because I said this to a friend of mine who was having a kid. And I said, well, just so you know, this was my experience. And so when you do this and do this, this is how your kid might feel. Because this is how I felt when my single mom did this. Yes. And so that's your entree. It's like, well, you know, I was in that situation when I was. It doesn't always work, though. No, just saying she's wondering how she can broach the subject. You broach the subject by saying, in my experience, having been the child of divorced parents. That's how you do it. That's the back door way. You go back door. In my experience. I, I, my experience, not you should. Right, exactly. Don't say you should or Mm -hmm. you're doing it wrong. Yeah, Yeah. I couldn't say my experience because I was brought up with parents who loved each other and, you know, were married and in love and actually it made me very insecure because I couldn't I was having such a hard time with relationships when I was younger and I'm like how come theirs is so perfect you know so it's the opposite isn't that nice I saw saw that a little bit with my parents Mm -hmm. I think my parents really do they still love each other I just don't think they could be married to each other right and that doesn't you know that's a different thing because sometimes people love each other but they just can't live with each other they could make it work right well I saw my mom in some you know she just did not look happy to, she, I mean, she loved having a kid as more of a, a thing that she accomplished versus uh, wanting to be a mother. She didn't want to take care of me. She gave me to my grandparents. I had a nanny from like day one. Oh. She didn't want to do the work. And she said that she even said this to Jim. Like, it's it's not a secret. She goes, I wanted to have a baby, but I didn't want to take care of it. Quote. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so to me, but also she was she not had a nanny. She, she did. That's why I said I had a oh, nanny since did. I was born. Oh, yeah. Wow. 
and then I had my grandmother who then became nanny uh, uh, who took care of me after my after my dad left mm. and but the most important thing to me was I didn't see a lot of love in my immediate family. Now my cousins and extended family, lots and lots of love and great families. And that's why I went back to New York to go to, I tried to go to a bat mitzvah or a bar mitzvah every, every other year at least so I could see like my family who all loves each other. But my immediate family, I didn't see any. So all I really craved was to be in a relationship where there's a lot of love. And then if a child comes from that, then great. But unfortunately, the person that I met that I saw that I could be with for the rest of my life that accepted me for who I am and how I am and yada yada and that would grow with me it was too late to have kids so but I'm I'd rather be with him and not have kids sure. than be with some fucking asshole who having a divorce and fighting with him or trying to get alimony or some shit. I'd rather be in the situation childless or child free with the man who I, I love and can be with versus the guy that I'm going to divorce. Well, the bottom yes. line yes. is it's still your life and your journey. So, yeah. you know, if you're not going to be happy, how can you make, you know, your child's going to feel that. So yes. sometimes it's better if that doesn't work out, then it doesn't work out and you did better just to have the right man in your life and just continue right. your journey with a couple of ex-boyfriends one of who you know um <laughs> i didn't feel like this was going to be the happiest relationship of uh, of in uh, of the century and i was like wow if i bring kids into the world in this particular relationship it's probably not going to be super happy it's like i'm just going to rely yeah, on my I child do, for happiness I, I didn't want a kid more than i wanted to what's i'm trying you know what i'm trying to say you, you, if there are some women just by any means necessary they just have to have a kid and yeah. you know everything be damned what is that to feel worthy I, I i didn't have that drive um until like the very very tail end of my fertility um because maybe if i had that drive i would have done it sooner um so you just you honored your highest good and i applaud you Thank for you. that because a lot of women or people don't aren't self-reflective uh, enough to understand i'm too self-reflective uh but and again you know the thing with with children is like there's a whole timing uh, uh, do, you know do i wish i do, uh, all of this happened years ago yes do i wish i met my husband years ago yes but guess what i did not it yeah. is it happens when well, it's that's supposed a, to that's happen. a key thing if you don't meet the right person till later you know, yeah, exactly. Like, You're I, just going to be my, divorced. And my angry. desire yeah. to have a kid did not outweigh everything else. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, it wasn't, or else I would have gotten knocked up by ex boyfriend. Yeah, sometime no, I in never. My 30s. I never wanted that. I wanted to make sure it was the right. I thing. mean, I after getting pregnant yeah. and not being ready, it was like. I was so fearful of getting pregnant after that that I was, you know, so. Um, Oh my God! I was so I was so scared of getting because I'm fertile. I guess I'm very I was very mm. fertile. Um, that every time I was having sex with a boyfriend, I was so afraid of getting pregnant. It was you know condoms and birth control and and diaphragms and sponges and you know uh, yeah. I remember being you know, I was pretty I was pretty regular, but there were times when. I'd get so um, nervous. I'd yeah. run to thrifties in Beverly Hills. And buy a pregnancy test. <laughs> <laughs> what did she say? I said, she goes, you go to thrifty in Beverly Hills and buy, and I said, a coat hanger. <laughs> <laughs> That's very old school. And cheap. <laughs> cheap. Very cheap. Uh, in it's some, in Beverly Hills. It's uh, coming to that in some states. No one does coat hangers. Coming to a state <laughs> near you. <laughs> coming to a state. No, so I went up there, there were a few there were a few emergency trips to panic stricken stricken trips to thrifties in Beverly Hills, which is no longer that's how old I am and I'm dating myself. Well, I have definitely taken the to, morning to after buy, pill. Yes. Oh, my God. A, what an experience to that buy is. A, a, a pregnancy test, and I yeah. go into the bathroom at Thrifty's and pee on it. And I couldn't like, even wait to get home. Hey, if you never want to make sure, if you never want to make sure you ever have an oopsie and think you might be pregnant and have to take that horrid yeah, uh, morning after that. pill, which takes you to hell and back for like 72 hours uh, or whatever. That's bad. You will never even want to look at penis again. Is it <laughs> after that? Is it that bad or have they changed the formulation? Maybe they have, but in my day, it that's was bad. like... 
It's still oh. bad. Oh my god! It's like being the demons were coming out of you. You're, you're cramping, like cramping, the vomiting, or... the hugging the toilet yeah. all night, all day, and the next night. Wow. Okay. And your guts wrenching, and it, it, it's like someone's just pulling your insides out, basically. So I mean, let's talk awful. about. <laughs> let's, I want to talk about one other topic on child list before we wrap up this show. Okay. And I, because I, I want to vent. And so now this is actually, I'm changing my bitch fest. What was my bitch fest originally? Oh yes, arthritis. We'll get to that next week, ladies Uh-oh. and gentlemen. Sounds so um, geriatric, yeah. anyway. So uh, <laughs> what I want to talk about is that pertains to this episode is society. It's like nature made it so that it's very natural for us to procreate, but it's society and patriarchal society and religion that says that you have to have a kid. Right? It is, this was a man-made <laughs> construct that the most important thing in this world is, is procreating. Well, it's I mean, the only reason we exist, really. What, well, we, we, that's right, because our parents procreated, so we're here. No, but it's to continue the species of mankind since but the beginning of mankind. Okay, but there's plenty, <laughs> but there's plenty of kids that, there's plenty of people that are going to have children, so it's not a mandate that every single person has a kid, because if all of us, if every single person that didn't have a kid have a, had a kid, we're at 7 billion people on this planet now, we would probably already be in another freaking ice age. I mean, we wouldn't have enough food, we wouldn't have enough fuel on this well, planet. you know those millennials, they're not having enough babies apparently. They don't want to have Enough for what? Right, enough right. for what? I mean, we already don't have enough food. There's already starvation all over the world. There's unwanted children. I mean, one reason I also didn't want to have biological kids by choice since I was about 10 years old was because if I'm going to have a kid, I said to myself very young, I'm going to adopt a kid who has no freaking shot at life. You know, they're in a war-torn country, or their parents are crack addicts, or they're just, you know, literally dumped in a dumpster. I would much rather save a kid who was already brought here un- uh, of to no fault of their own and save a kid that exists then because of so some adoption yes then because so many people have kids for let's yes. face it let's face it when you talked about legacy it is for it is for ego so many people let, let's be real have kids because they need to procreate well to, it's also for history of my it's my ego heritage. Not but ego. it's ego yes it is no it has nothing to do with ego for me I have to say not that, you no but I'm saying in general i don't think it's ego legacy and continuity i mean that's since the oldest tribes in the world oh, because I mean, because i need to have my sperm and my egg mm-hmm. make the next generation mm-hmm. because mine's going to be the best no it's that. just to have a continuity of yours of your heritage i'm just telling you a lot of people a lot of people come from an ego i read a book on the this. only <laughs> reason if we were dropped in the middle of the jungle today with no knowledge no meds nothing just new man and woman starting from day one the only reason we exist is to procreate and keep the species I, going. I, yes, and I, 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 we were educated to give, have choices and not to, but if you weren't, you wouldn't know any different. It's animal instinct. Yes, to both of your points, I think that having children is, gives people, women, purpose and validation. And I also think that it, it there's a, a very misguided notion that it could possibly save a marriage if having a baby but that's oh, modernism i'm talking you know, about you have no education no knowledge yeah you I, just have this animal instinct but you're, but that you're but coupling and then a baby comes along and you're like ooh, look at that yes you know you don't know I, any I, different I, nobody asked but it, like i said it's, it's the national natural it's order instinctual of, it's yes. instinctual it's what you're that's s- why we still exist to today you know right, but it doesn't mean you have to do it that's because today no, not we're educated and we have it. choices yeah. and no, we no have, one's holding a gun yeah. to your head for no exactly but if you were not that is my knowledgeable fest, which, which i will okay. save go because okay first of all i want to say something to the 40 plus demo that we are that's right that we're talking about yeah by the time you get in your 40s, it's too late to freeze your eggs. So I, I want to back up. Do it up. in your 30s. If 20s. you happen to be in your 30s and you're watching this. Yeah. First of all, I want to say, you know what? You guys are so fabulous because you're beautiful and you're blonde and you're brainiacs. The two of you are... T- <laughs> what is it, yeah, blonde? I don't know. I just, yeah, you know, the, there's just such a... Like a stigma, right? Right. But you're gorgeous, and you're, Aww. Just, Aww, you know, Keva. all this and more tequila oh, for you, girl. I, you know, I realized <laughs> I was holding my my glass the entire time, and I thought that does not look good. That's a not a good look. So <laughs> I like it. It's a, it down. I like but the look. Seriously. Big props to both Tom of you. Aww, thank you. It's like all this in brains too. Thank you. Seriously. Thank you. So um, what you were? Yeah. By say. the time you get to your into your forties, it's too late to freeze. You got to go for it. 
Really? And, the, and it may not be right. You may not have all the money, and it may not be perfect scenario, but you have to really do this and say, is it that is it that important? And I say, go for it. If you feel it, uh, you will. nothing will ever be perfect in life. You will never have enough money. You will never have the right guy. If you are in your 40s and you don't right now, and, it, and that might be your, your, you know, your time to do this and um true no one is going to fault you for trying i mean yeah. i i feel like i have to say something in in defense of single right. mothers by choice yes I, I i nobody wants to be a single mother nobody but you do what you have to do if right. you want it that if that's bad. what you want yeah my so love fest to all women out there yeah whatever your choice is but Ooh, think about why. My, my advice you, is, yes. do you, is it just because you want someone to take care of you in your old right. age? Is it no. just because you want to feel no, worthy no, or valid? No, 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 right. But um, I, I support yeah. whatever your choice is. Yeah. And it's, got, it's personal. No yeah. one knows what goes on in your, you know, no one should judge. It's more about it's your just, roots and your continuity, If I it think. calls to you, if you are called for sure. Okay. But you have to, I also believe that you have to do yeah, some introspection. Course. Because I truly believe that, that, that there should be no judgment against women who don't have kids. Because right. I willingly didn't have kids because the most important thing to me was a relationship. Uh, you know, I am an anti-society. Like, if society tells me your purpose in life is to have a kid, I'm going to be like, I'm not having a kid. Because I'm just a rebel. Okay. I'm a, I was a punk rock kid. I was a rebel my whole life. So if you tell me what I have to do, yeah. Yes. I'm just going to do the opposite. Yeah, so, so you know, people like you and I, we march to the beat of our own drummers. Exactly. And and what society it, says, you're not going to be happy if I you mean, don't I have a kid. I could have been married a hundred times already, right? I could have. I've. I could have. Yeah. And I could have had kids, and I probably would have been divorced because it right. wasn't the right time. And I, I knew that that much. I could. I yeah. could sense. I it agree was with not that. my time to I get married. It wasn't my time to to yes. commit. It wasn't my time to have a kid it, during those years that I probably should have. So you know, spank me. <laughs> well, I have a gynecologist okay. who's really so pro. Around. Having, I have a gynecologist who's pro having babies, and up until the last time I had my annual check, he keeps saying. Still not too late if you want to consider, <laughs> you know. Oh, no, you Mr. Yeah. Anal, Dr. Anal Pope Dr. says Anal that. Dr. Anal wants to have babies, man. He, he wants does. Babies. He never like, asked me. Too late, my man. Too late. The same if you have the money, uh, sh you know, you yes. can keep going and doing all <laughs> kinds of extraordinary measures to to do this. I because ran I'd out. love I to deliver your time. baby. I ran out of money. <laughs> I had to. I was like, that's it for no, me. No, you but, gave it the college. But guy. I just. I also want to say that um, to uh, those states that I referenced earlier, mm -hmm. to what seems to be going on in this country right. as it r pertains to women's re reproductive rights. This is a major. Um, this is this is like a, a for this is a nine one one to all women. This is not this is not no joke. Um, to me, I I really take this very personally because mm -hmm. I was that woman, mm -hmm. and to think that that I, if I lived in one of those states that forced me to bear a child, it is beyond. I can't even and shame on shame on them shame on the male legislature le legislators that are imposing these extremely restrictive um, um, rules and laws on to our bodies yeah um, but there is a but that I think about morally no, you mentioned except, morally. no exception <laughs> for rape or incest right I mean what age are we living exactly. in I think more people need but, to have abortions but when <laughs> you're creating a life and you're taking it away what is that it, it well it does first of all and no I'm pro-abortion I'm not against okay. I mean, obviously I think women should have the right no to do what they want no one likes abortion no no one's you know it's pro-abortion no, pro-choice no, something pro doesn't have a voice you're pro-choice why should we uh, I know it's pro-abortion you didn't like that pill <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. I mean, that the state should not force anybody to do no. anything with their body. No. I don't care if it's a tonsillectomy or a vasectomy. Well, you're not in a dictatorship or a, where you have no rights, and, you know, I understand that. It but is not pleasant. Sometimes okay. in my mind, it I just play not, it. I play no it as... It is a last, uh, you know, you know. Uh, resort. Well, the conventional wisdom was you do it in the first trimester. 
You know, that's it, what it, I, it, I still believe that. It's still that, a living thing. That is just my bitch fest. And by the way, in lieu of my own children and siblings, guess who I am giving my, guess who my beneficiary is? Or oh. The Democratic Party? Planned Parenthood. My dogs. <laughs> Planned Parenthood. I love My that. dogs. <laughs> okay? Yeah. No shit, man. Really? That's how strongly I That's feel good. about this. Get your hands off my body, yeah. off my choices, out of my bedroom, U.S. out of my uterus. That's a good idea, actually. U.S. I, I out I'll of my uterus. We should do t-shirts. Yeah. U.S. out of my uterus. Yeah. That's good. Okay. I love it. I, I, I loved it then. I love it now. I, I think I think I'll do the same Bring thing. Bring it I'm back. I'm a huge... I, I, I don't know what I would have done without Planned Parenthood at certain points in my life when I had no insurance. They were they were a, a lifesaver. We, but, uh, we are living in some fucked up times. Yeah. I mean, there are that, some people who need to have abortions. Their kids, they know, are going to have some handicap, or the father was a family member. There was a uh, rape. But yeah, the, argument, an incest. It's still, the okay. argument, and not that I'm saying I agree with it, I'm just saying the argument lies. Okay. It's a life, regardless. It is a life. But why should anybody force you to have that when you either can't afford it or in no position to be able to raise or And the kid's going to be miserable. You're, here's, here's you're what, terminating here's a living life. How do you know that kid won't turn out to be Stephen Hawkins? We, How do you know it's not going to be Ted Bundy? We don't know. Uh, you don't know. But you we can have a perfectly normal planned child and have a Ted Bundy. Uh, we don't know. And that's not for anybody else to, to right. determine except yeah. for us. That's no one. No one should make those choices for I, us. It's 100%. hard enough. It's hard enough. And, and um, I just, I don't know. I if nature chooses that it shouldn't be done, then it miscarries for you. That's what they're saying. That is not true because how many kids are born with ridiculous diseases and genetic disorders? And, and some then of they them are planned. Well, we, because they, they took the test and they believe that God willed us to have this child, so they will. Right, so th- th- that's a religion, which is a man-made construct. So let's not go or there. Or is it moral? It's a whole other morality. It's a man-made construct that you have to have this child. It, it, because it's based on, on religion. So if you're going to believe that God wants you to have this child, then you will. But the child would probably say, you know, they're not going to feel anything or know anything. The child would probably be like, you didn't have to have me. <laughs> okay, so if if these states are so hell-bent on you having a kid, then w- pay for them. Yeah, That's the deal. Pay for you, them, you, exactly. You want to force women to have children? Don't be. Don't say you're pro-life you are not pro-life you are pro-birth yes that's what you really are yeah. because if you, were, if you really ki- if you if these people really gave a shit about children they wouldn't abandon them and let them starve and go without health care and be with a mom and, who's or, a crack or, addict or, or, or take away their health care or 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 when the mother has to tell or, them that you were a child of rape i was raped right, by. <laughs> right? Yeah. who's your dad uh, some guy who raped Sorry, me and I, almost killed I, me no, no one wants to, no abortion is it is a, it, it's a, a ter- it's horrible it's uh, very unpleasant yeah. Okay, course. but you, if it's not right, it's not right, and no one makes that decision, no one should make that decision, but you, the, period. And my solution is, then every single person who is pro-life and says you have to have a kid has to donate $1,000 a year or $10,000 a year right, right. to have a, a place where these kids can get the care that they need and be taken care of by Well, Canada parents. does that, by the way. You know, all they yes. give a lot of money per child to help you. All of these. Because they want to increase the population. They're, you know, they, they want people to have more children. Yeah, we can't do that here. It's socialism. But, yeah, right. We have but the kid, but we won't help support that you. That was my have dream. the kid, my but dream. you're on your own. Exactly. I was, that. My plan. That's bullshit. So I think I'll just overdose on crack. So Thank you very much. I'll overdose my on crack. My plan was to have a child and to adopt a child. That was my ideal plan, even still when time. I got married. You I'm can still adopt a child. You can still adopt a child. But I said, you know, I'd have one of my own and take one who's not wanted and make them a family. Because I think that's just nice, nice balance. It you doesn't know? always work so well. It doesn't work so well, but <laughs> nothing does. Know, I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't perfect, and I had a great family. We all have fun. No, I mean, I, I have friends who are in those families where one is the biological and one's not. Yeah, me too. Guess which one always has the drug addiction? Yeah, of course. Guess which, which one? The one who is the real one. No. I mean, the adopted one. Yes, yeah, the adopted one is the one that winds up having but the problem. Of course they do. Because they don't feel as loved. But I also have met adopted people, adults, that just rave about their parents and are so grateful. Sure. So I've seen both. 
Sure. Okay. But that's because the, the parent in the, the older generation, they couldn't have kids at all, so all their kids are adopted. Mm. It's not one biological no, and one not. I had one that had mixed. They oh, had yeah? two, and then they adopted one. And that adopted child is like they, they are enamored by those parents. But the, oh, so the child's happy. Oh, my God. Okay. Yeah. It doesn't always happen. Uh, there are complications, but, you know, it's complica- life is complicated. Yeah. It is complicated. And that's why and what we are you have fine tuned females. Those children still have so to be So that we can figure families. it out. They have to have families. So someone's got to make a sacrifice. You guys are going to figure it all out. Well, we did. You're going to solve we the problems of the world. We have a lot of things that we need There's to talk to. There's some serious brain power <laughs> right here, everybody. Yeah. Right in We're this room. We're going to talk on the show. I've just thought long and hard. I feel like this is the opposite Oreo. You know, yeah. I'm like the, you guys, you know, because no. I'm the brunette and you're the opposite Oreo. But I think we all have. makes it interesting. I think we all have a very different take on it and I have thought very long and very hard on this topic for many 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 years and so I really understand where you know where I'm coming from and I feel like the majority of my decisions were in the camp of don't have a child um, and then uh, uh, unless it's adopted and then I have a very small sliver of me that says who's going to take care of me when I'm old and that to me is selfish it is so I thought there's very little but it, depends, very little, it yeah. depends on life where you live like some people they take pride in taking of care of their elderly like that's what they want that. to do they want to take care of the people that brought them into this earth it's an honor like we said yeah, I Asians I don't think do there are that. a lot of women Asian at, culture of childbearing age that go hmm I'm going to have kids so that they'll take care of me when I'm older do you think <laughs> the plan sign the that? contract baby as you come out of the womb I don't think, think think that far ahead. sign I, this I think, line I think older women do who older have women do yeah, in sure but later not years. when you're in your 20s and 30 no. they don't think and oh who's going to take care yeah. of me when right I'm not in their 20s and maybe early 30s but at some point some people do think that wow but I do. And some cultures, it's just what you do. It's in not even questions. But that's what I'm saying. It's a, that's a, that's my bitch fest. Is that it's like society says that's what you're born for. I mean, fuck you. Well, I don't that's know. what I was born for. No, you're not born for. But if somebody but gave, the, gave society, up their best years of their life to give you the best life, and when they're feeble and weak and can't fend for themselves, what are you going to just let them drop? Of course you're going to take care of them. Otherwise, right. you don't love. How many kids do not go to visit their ailing parents? Well, shame on them. Well, there's so many. Shame on them. But maybe the parent was a shit parent, and that's why. Like, you're a shitty parent, so I'm not going to go see you. My life, my childhood was well, miserable. I guess you're right, but you have to define the levels of shit. I mean, also, some well, kids are just entitled, for- and they think that's shit because they didn't get that sports car they wanted or whatever, that trust fund, and so shame on them. Well, it's different for every Grow single up. Well, you got to talk to each and individual person and ask them what they went through. That's they had food, they had a house, they had a roof over there, they had clothing, they're they had everything that most people could only ha- dream of. But you're talking about some people that you're thinking of in your head. There's an awful lot of people who did not have that and had shitty abuse. And I've seen people that came from terrible conditions that are so grateful to their parents for trying so hard. Yeah. It's 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 very individual, but there yeah. but there's no guarantee that the kids are going to be there to, to take care of you. No. Yeah. It, hello, no. I see it all the time. Yeah. People, um, you know, it's they don't like their parents, and it's hard. Right. And they don't like their parents. Just because they Period. Have, you, no, so it's right. payback. Not everyone likes their parents. <laughs> Tata, a newsflash. Not everybody likes their parents. Well, you wouldn't be here if it wasn't for them. doesn't matter. Not everybody likes their parents. Do you understand? There is. I, I want to. <laughs> not everyone a, does. Well, unless you, I guess friend. if you're abused, I could see it. Yeah. But even if you're not abused, not everybody likes their parents. Not everybody loves their parents. But where's the compassion? Like just a stranger on the street who's elderly and can't cross the street, where you're gonna just push him in the traffic and say "fuck you"? Not <laughs> all, I, all I can say. You mean is, nothing to me. Not every parent loves their kids, and I'm not every sorry kid for people that can't. Okay, anymore. but you can, you have to take yourself out of your little bubble where it's you, not a bubble. It's yeah. Humanity, my friend. You had had compassion. You had parents that loved each other. Not everybody. Forget my parents. I'll help my neighbor if she's in trouble and she's old and she's on her own. You You know, I feel bad. You might, but maybe you're not going to be there. Maybe she's not the greatest person in the world, but I still feel like you're at an age where you can't help yourself. What are you supposed to do? Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, if they had kids and their kids aren't there to help them, then certainly what, you step in because their kids don't love them and don't want to take care of them. It's not, Just yeah. because you have a kid doesn't mean you can guarantee that they're going to love you. Not. And doesn't mean that you can guarantee that you're going to love them. No. Mm. You, I guess you, it depends on your sense of duty. Yeah. I mean, is it you, right. 
sense of it, duty. And some things are bigger uh, than you. Well, that's your sense of duty. Right. Yeah. You so, got to think, like, what about the people that go and fight and lose their lives to fight for the country so that we can have a good life? Those soldiers that go right. out and they fight and wars and they give up their young life. I mean, why? You know, if people didn't do things. I have a choice. My parents are here. You they're, wouldn't have they're, freedom. They're older. They're aging. Um, uh, you know, is it's my duty as a daughter despite how I feel, might feel about them, I'm not going to abandon them. I'm not, not. going to be yeah. that. I don't want to be, I don't, I know people like that. In the I end, you have to live really, with yourself. I don't want to be that. You I, have to live with yourself and your conscience. Yes. 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 Yeah, just, that, that's that's my, but I, I, you know, that's yeah. who I am. No, no that's sense of duty, a, but not everybody has that and you can't. And soldiers have no relationship to you, but they're going to lose their life so that you can live in freedom. But, but they mostly and, sign know, up for that, too. Yeah, but that's called being unselfish and, and seeing a greater cause. And not all of us are going to do that, obviously, because we're more selfish and we don't want to. We want to have the benefit and we don't well, want to pay the price. Well, here's what we can all do. Here's solving the world's problems. Then <laughs> for, all of the, for all of the elderly that don't have kids that want to take care of them or don't have kids, but whether or not the kid is selfish or just felt like they don't want to take care of their parents because the parents were abusive or not good to them, then I think we should all volunteer at retirement homes and old age homes and help take care of our elderly. How about that? Yes, and I would say that for anybody who does not have children, there are fantastic volunteer opportunities, mentoring, Yes, uh, that you can... Um, channel your you know your maternal instincts i'm a mentor i mentor at-risk kids that's Aww. great it uh it satisfies that part of me mm -hmm. uh there are always ways for you to care for and nurture and express your love i don't care if it's animals or human right. beings so the key is to right. um find your calling and if you feel then you know it's yeah i volunteer i used to volunteer at a place yeah, called home down in always South. or the elderly or yeah. whatever that's what i'm thinking about now volunteering volunteer for well, you know what? i take care of a lot of elderly in my family and they're not like my direct parents but there's i do just, take care of them to, to but my father his stepdad used to abuse him and who was there at the end when he had alzheimer's my dad had a lot of reasons not to be there, but he was there. Yeah, so those those unrealized, you know, Conscious. dreams or yeah. plans. Maybe you touch that, one that person's you life. Maybe you touch yeah, many. Yeah, so you can you can recreate them other places. Mm -hmm. it, well, I I felt. As much as my dad and I didn't have a real, real relationship, I mean, I was still there. I was the one sitting next to him when he took his last breath. Mm -hmm. Just me. That's it. Yeah. So you know, sometimes you just it, morality takes over anger or yeah, you know, it's a sense of duty to, to the, see my dad right, on to his the last breath. extent that you can have presence of mind to yeah. be right, to have some foresight and think a few steps ahead and go, "Am yeah. I going to regret this?" Right. You know. Yes. By all means, right. ask yourself those questions. You might, but but what I'm saying yeah. is sometimes you don't have the luxury of time. Yeah. To ask you to to think it out five steps ahead yeah. you just you just do what you're you know your what your instincts and yes tell some you people do. have some dominating parents who put their kids through so much guilt because they expect them to be there after because i gave you this and this and now you must come and do this yeah, for me and yeah, that's yeah. not right either yeah. i'm not saying that they should do that you know I ha there's a there's a great post a friend of mine uh put on facebook about the abortion um debate and i could find it like in a second if if you guys let me yeah. or not. Or well, we can link it. We, mm -hmm. We'll link it in the okay. show notes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Go ahead. Talk amongst yourselves. Well, 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 I'm oh. saying, well you can tell us that yeah. once we wrap up and then we'll oh. put it in the show the notes. Photos. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because it is, it uh, is such an incredible um, argument. And it, it makes you, it, it puts a different um, sort of logical spin on um, the, the abortion issue. And I'm going to... Hang on, I got it right here. Okay, you here. find it. Okay. And I think I'm done with my bitch fest. My bitch fest was about, you know, that society making women feel like our only purpose in life or our primary purpose in life is that we're here to have kids, which I disagree with. Okay. What about your love fest now? Let's change tunes. Um, I Let's go yoga. from bitch to love. I Iyengar yoga. <laughs> <laughs> and what about it? is it that makes you have such passion? Well, I've always loved physical therapy and I've been doing Iyengar yoga once a week. I need to do it more, but I have just fallen in love with this method of yoga. It's like physical therapy if an, if a, if an Indian yogi was your physical therapist. Mm. 
Okay. Go ahead. Okay. So that's my love fest. Okay. So this friend of mine uh, posted something on Facebook um, about the, the the abortion laws, and he likens them to organ donation. And what if your child, uh, you know, needed some kind of transplant, or would you be uh, forced to give up an, an organ? No, you are not forced to give up an organ to save a child's life. Get the the connection here about like life and what do you mean you're not forced? you don't the state it would be unconstitutional mm -hmm. to force someone to give up a an organ to save a child's life their child's life any theirs wow theirs or any child's wow. life so really <laughs> why should the state legislate to us to so you would let your child die are you uh, having an unborn child or a living okay, child? Because so I'm really freaked out. <laughs> it doesn't matter if the procedure required to complete the donation is trivial or the rationale for refusing is flimsy or arbitrary, or if the procedure is the only hope the child has to survive, or if the child is a genius or a saint or anything else. The decision to donate must be voluntary to be constitutional. The right is even extended to a person's body after they die. If they did not voluntarily commit to donate their organs while alive, their organs cannot be harvested after death, regardless of oh. how you useless those your After organs death. are to the deceased or how many lives they would right. save. That's the law. The use of a woman's uterus to save a life is no different from the use of her bone marrow to save a life. It must be offered voluntarily. Do you get what I'm, where I'm going here? Hmm. Yes. Okay. So by all means, profess your belief that providing one's uterus to save the child is morally just and refusing is morally wrong. That is a defensible philosophical position regardless of who agrees and who disagrees. But mm. legally, it must be the woman's choice to carry out the pregnancy. She must choose, she may choose to carry the baby to term. She may choose not to. Hmm. Either decision could be made for all the right reasons and all the wrong reasons or anything in between. Hmm. It must be her choice. Yeah. And protecting the right of body autonomy. This yeah. is what we're talking about. Body, body autonomy. autonomy. Yeah, exactly. Means the law is on her side. Supporting that precedent is what being pro-choice means. This is what I'm saying. Yeah, and Autonomy this is a country where our bodies. We're based on the, the country was founded on f having freedom, freedom of choice. Yes. Not to ha uh, the country was founded by people who wanted to be more religious. So that's why we're in this quandary to begin with, because yes. England wasn't religious enough. <laughs> so at the time, right? So the Puritans and the Pilgrims came here because they wanted stricter laws, and that's why we're in this bind. And Europe's not because they wanted less religion and. Americans wanted more, but we always keep saying that we're that we have freedom of choice, freedom of choice, freedom of choice. That's why we're here. My freedom of choice right. is to maybe not have this child. I can and I can right. pick whatever religion it's I want to be. As unpleasant as it is, and it's horrible. Okay, yeah. let's. It is. You know, it's and and we almost can't talk, think about it so much because the more you think about. You know the heartbeat, and it's a living thing, yeah. and it's just like well, it's, what it's the difference if you deliver a baby, decide you don't want it, and kill it? That's well, not ever going to happen. That's but I'm people just saying, do, do like, it. What and is the a, difference? That's that's just, those people that, go to jail. No, that's that, called against the law. But why isn't it then when it's a living thing in you? That's what I'm. I'm because not, it's still your I'm just body. Wondering how that's different. Because it's still your, it's still body. your body. It's not no, outside but of your it's body. It's alive in your body. But it's still your body. I it's don't know. It, right. It's right. still your body. Yeah, for you know what I don't understand is for, it doesn't have for a, life a its country own. and a government mm -hmm. that is so, you know. Well, the baby won't survive without so, you so taking care of it once it's born. Small government and limited government and and freedoms and freedom of this and amendments and which I I am all for. It's shocking how um, stifling. Oh God, yeah. And how hypocritical. Less government, less is. government. Less, accepting less, your pussy. Less in, right. <laughs> Right. Less government exactly. everywhere except everywhere. your VJJ. Right. Only your VJJ has to have laws. Right. But the rest of this country, let's. Yeah. Well, you can't be forced to be pregnant. Like if someone wants just to impregnate you, because yes, you they want to yes, you can. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. It's called in rape. Alabama. No, I'm Georgia saying, and that's Missouri. what I'm saying. I'm saying it's not right to do that to a woman. You're not a factory. You know, that's, that's where not we're right. at. Right. But I'm saying if you got pregnant and you're like, oh, shit, I just don't want to have a baby and I'm going to have an abortion. You and have it's five got seconds. a heartbeat. You have five seconds to make that decision. Mm -hmm. The clock is ticking. Right. And what, 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 what month no. are you not allowed? Like six months? Five well, months? What, I no. mean, you can get an ultrasound. No. You see the baby. Six weeks. Sometimes you don't know. You don't know in six weeks. Mm. How about having to carry your rapist's child? Yeah. How about that? Mm. Or yeah. your brother's. Yeah. I mean, or it's, your just, it's just insane. I'm not pro-abortion. 
please do not get that is not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about. I'm not saying I'm pro-abortion, but I'm pro-choice. Ab- yes. But I do weigh out the morality of it in my mind because sometimes I think spiritually that a life is a life is a life is a life. Once okay. it's got a heartbeat, but, but it's a living thing. Based on, on Jill's uh, philosophy, you should, if that's the case, you have a moment where you go, hmm, should I? Can I? Sh- but what moment? Know? When it has a heartbeat? Like, is that, uh, uh, is that not pregnant, killing something? The minute you're pregnant, right? You have to ask yourself those questions. You have to self-reflect and go, is this the right time? Is this the right person? Yes, am, I, am I equipped? You know, all of these things, you should you have, should have a checklist of things to ask I yourself. Did. I did. I was 30 years old. I went through that list, and I was like, this baby goes. Right. Yeah. No, no, Can't no, do it. No, so. This will not be good for and, the child. Right, right. <laughs> and right. Or me. And if I'm not happy, I can't raise a happy child. Well, look, yeah. I took a morning after pill after, you know, having a regretful night and thinking, oh, no, shouldn't have done that. So, in fact, you know, I didn't know if, you know, I didn't know if I was really pregnant or not, but it was a precaution for me to make sure I wasn't. So that was a choice, okay. right? So, but what's... But if I was, but let's it's, say... Okay, so it depends on, depending on when your idea of conception is. Yeah, well, let's just you say know, it happened the weekend the and minute that hit, week I was like, hmm, hit, I'm not getting um, my period. The hits egg, <laughs> yeah, technically. right. Human. But they can only give you the morning pill after like 48 hours, up to 48 hours. Oh, well, it's after. already a life. It's already a life. Is it? It's already, it's yes. already multiplying. The right. second the two cells but meet. I, I didn't know. Like, I just did it as a precaution. I wasn't sure I wasn't pregnant. I was just like, all right, just in case, let's not get pregnant. Because, you know, this was like one of those drunken moments or well, whatever. Well, no. <laughs> so so yeah. just tack on a few weeks after that. Yeah, and well, then what after that, with. what is it? It's a life. Then you know you're pregnant. It's then you're right. aware you maybe, do have a life maybe, in you. Okay, but so maybe what if you didn't realize at the time that you got pregnant and now oops it's six weeks late oops it's five so minutes after thing. i'm saying it's you a know, juggle in your like, mind like you might want to get an abortion but you know in your mind it's still a living thing but it is the second it can, the second the a cell meets thing the cell is a living thing right but the second the cell meets exactly the cell. a so living thing is a living thing so life is life there's right. no other way to describe it so that morning after pill you took and 48 hours later that fetus would have actually been alive according well, to your the philosophy said it would just be a cell it wouldn't it's have a, it it's a it doesn't have a heartbeat then. It's impossible. It doesn't have a heart. It hasn't developed a heart so yet. So then let's, what, so at what week do we have a heart? Then That's maybe? what I wanted to know. On yeah. the yeah. next episode of yeah. Fine Tuning. <laughs> when, <laughs> when does it have a heart and a, and a system that makes it actually a real yeah. living This is some deep shit. Human people. being. It is some deep shit. I'm glad we talked about this it. This is some good stuff. Right. It is. I'm glad deep. we, and we're, deep. we are hitting it hard. Look, when you're young, you don't think about it like that. You're just like, oh, make sure I don't get pregnant. Oh, well, how, would you have to, my life? how would you like to be a young woman in, in one of these states? Right. And you're going, oh, my God, I think I'm pregnant, and it's five after six weeks. You know, I'm like, oh. Well, it's the next day, and I can't get a morning day? after pill. Right. They're not good. See, no. this one, anyway. Two days. So it's you have two, two days. It's a, it's <laughs> a coat hanger. The conversation continues. You have like a couple, 48 or 72 hours. Then it's a coat hanger at Thrifties. That was oh, funny. Oh, jeez. <laughs> That's like, that's like so, that's vulgar. <laughs> and that's dangerous for you. We're going back to those days. That's right. Okay. That's you why laugh, I'm saying you that. laugh. Could it vibrate while we're doing it? I mean, a little pleasure to no. process? No. Oh, that's a no. No, a that's no. vulgar. <laughs> there you go. Well, I had to get more vulgar than you guys because, you know. But yeah, we are, we are going back into the dark ages. <laughs> You're so. getting dark. <laughs> Yeah. All right. So you heard my bitch fest. Anyone else? And yours was menopause, and yours was. Well, I didn't have a bitch fest today, but I've been bitching this whole time. Yeah, so I think yeah. I've saturated the bitch fest. You've portion. used up your bitch a lot. I've been bitchy. <laughs> and my so love fun. fest was doing Iyengar yoga because it makes me feel like a new person anger every time yoga. I do it. Iyengar. Yeah, I know. I call it anger. Anger yoga. yoga. Anger yoga. I'm very not angry after I do yoga. See, I'm angry it's before I walk fine. in. Yeah. It's, I, the, it's the Sanskrit way of saying anger, the uh, I anger. So to circle back to Trevor talking about, you know, how you're tired and, you know, all these things that you go through in your changes at yes. this time of your life. Yes. Jill introduced me to this product by Promera called Burn. It's a powder. And it helps you. It has caffeine in it, natural caffeine, right, Jill? Yep, and niacin. And, and, you know, I don't usually take any of these kind of drinks, but this powder I put in my water, and I drink it, and I immediately have an amazing sense of energy, and not jitters. Energy, my brain fog goes away, and I feel much more clarity, and I really love this. I really love this product. Thank you, Jill. You're welcome. And I, I love it. it. And thank you, Premier Sports, for yes, giving me lots of bottles of it. Yes, thank you, because I'm addicted. I love it. 
Yeah. And it really is. A, it's like a, it's not high in calories and it's pretty natural, right? It yeah. has vitamins in it. And no, yeah, no colors, no and dyes. You can control no how flavors. much you want to put in. And I just, I just sip on that for most of the day until about two in the afternoon because I don't want to be stimulated all night. And then it's not overstimulating. It's clarity. Yeah, it's great for menopause. But also, the, the longevity studies show that the people who drink the most caffeine, not extreme, because you never want to be extreme, but more than you would think, like four to five cups a day, mm -hmm. um, the people who drink the most caffeine actually mm -hmm. live the longest. I read that today. Yeah. Why? Oh, just today. It's, that's, I just read that today. What about high blood pressure? It's uh, it's getting around. It's You're making the the rounds on, yes. the, on the blog, the blogosphere. Is that that's something? true. Yes. Yeah. 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 Wow. yeah. It might have been. There might be another study out out right now because I was listening to a, a podcast on June 9th where they talked about um, having more caffeine. So yeah. So caffeine's a good thing. Yeah, man, I love it. So why do the doctors always tell you when you're menopausal like to cut back your caffeine? Like all these women that are going through menopause tell me because I can't drink caffeine. I'll anymore. tell you why because once you hit menopause you don't sleep as well oh. that's why yeah i stopped drinking yeah. caffeine at like i have my my morning double shot of espresso and i'm pretty much good so once you're in menopause the the nature is trying to kill you so <laughs> yeah. fuck you drink caffeine live longer f you menopause <laughs> i say i'm living longer i'm fighting it every step of the way right, well, well then you have to go back to caffeine <laughs> burn doesn't keep me up at night but like i said i'll stop around two in the afternoon yeah, I, I, stop, stop. I stop early because and i'm fine yeah. i mean if i don't sleep it's just because i don't sleep you know yeah. but oh i highly recommend weed uh, weed is good oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, i'm a big we, uh, like component. CBD or smoking or smoking. oils? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm not an edible. Although I like CBD oil. Um, on so your love time. fest, your love fest is CBD oil. Mm -hmm. I love and it. We, I love it. I love it. I okay, we have. I don't. And you're just taking the notes. I we am. Well, I want to remember. I want to remember these things. I mean, yes. how bad can it be, right? Whether you rub it on your body or you put it in your under your tongue or. Okay. I think it's, it's great. It's just so great. I haven't had any real luck but with I'm it. But I'm a big um, admitted weed smoker. I love it. It's great for, thank you. I find it's very helpful for menopause. Well, oh, everybody yeah. does. I mean, you know, it's been kind uh, of uh, It is a mood Natural. elevator. Um, it is, it helps me with my appetite. Okay, so why, me, does, why, me. why does it give me anxiety all the time? It can. It can yeah, sometimes. Why? It gives me like um, delusional thoughts. Just and uh, maybe you're too much or the wrong kind. Or I've I tried know. everything. I have some that's CBD what, that's, what edibles, that's what edibles does to oh, me. Yeah. Edibles are awful. I try, Jim smokes. I can't a, do it. I can't do it. Jim's, and uh, by the way, ladies, it's legal here in California. Yeah. So come on over. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> so we, Jim now. has bought me every single kind for like when I get a headache or for my, you know, arthritis and muscle pains and for, um, you know, depression or anxiety. I mean, any ailment, he's gone to MedMen and tried a strain or two or three. And I've tried everything. Nothing's worked for anything. But then the one that he smokes for that he puts the oil in his little pen mm -hmm. the vape mm -hmm. yeah the vape pen mm -hmm. the one that he smokes for just like mental clarity uh -huh. which I don't know that there was any you know it's not for headaches it's not for pain it's not for any of this that's when I smoke that one and I feel fine wow. it's so weird it's like all the ones that they're saying are for this, that, and the other ailment do nothing for me. Even CBD oil, I put it under my tongue, does nothing, doesn't help me sleep, nothing. And then just the one that Jim uses for just his own little micro dose oh. of creativity. I'm like, well, let me try yours. I had nothing else and I had a migraine coming on. I tried his and I was like, oh. This one actually feels good. Well, you know, when I used to smoke in college once in a while, it used to give me a Xanax effect, and I loved it. I felt so calm and wonderful. Now, it gives me anxiety. Well, maybe try Jim's. The one that he yeah. has, I feel it's the only and one. And I do have the oil, too, which I take, and I can take it once, Yeah, it can, and it I, helps. Yeah. But if I take it twice in a row, like two nights in a row to sleep... Yeah, mm -mm. see, the thing about it, uh, as I was saying about menopause, whatever you have it's, that's already existing, mm -hmm. it, yeah. it can, everything amps up, everything, every yeah. little thing. Wow. And so, um, and maybe weed, what's happening is it's it's exasperating, you know, it's it uh, aggravating. It gives me or, paranoia. Blah. Yeah, but I, I get that with edibles. I can't, edibles, I can't yeah. Oh, yeah. ingest it. I get it with any I smoke it all day. But and I'm so envious of all these people who are so happy when they're smoking up and they calm like, down. It's like skin cream. There's like 5,000 skin creams. Yeah. And some are good for your skin and some don't. And right. most of them don't work, but then you mm -hmm. find the one that works. So that's what just happened. I must have tried like 20 different ones I will bring by okay. accident. I'd love to try something that works. Please. By by emergency yeah. or accident or kismet, I just happened to grab the one that Jim has been smoking for however long, and I was like, oh, 
I feel better. <laughs> I've tried so many other ones. And I can only go to Chardonnay because there's nothing that works on me. Yeah. Fine, like, fine. But I prefer no calories. I'll go for the your whatever, way. Whatever, whatever it takes. <laughs> okay, so our more. love fest to make us feel better during menopause. Mine is Iyengar. Yours is caffeine from Burn. From burn. And the Give flav- me energy and And clarity. the flavors are good too. And yours mm. is... A nice hybrid indica sativa hybrid mm. that's very good for me that's good. yours okay. Yeah. okay so there's our love fest and i think we have, have abundantly discussed our bitch fest <sighs> we're so bitchy <laughs> i got it out though we're fine-tuned so bitches so glad. i feel so good to get i feel, this. I feel purged and cleansed and 10 pounds lighter because yeah. i'm all, sweaty I know my very bitch sweaty out. <laughs> And yes, it's coming out of every pore. <laughs> it is so good to talk about this stuff because so many people feel like they can't discuss these things and people disagree. And it's okay to disagree. I mean, nobody knows when the right time to do it is or nobody it's knows true. if they're going to be in the right relationship. Well, no one real rules. You right, know? And no one knows. So stop judging because no one knows. So if you decided not to have a kid because you didn't know if it was the right relationship or you had an abortion because you didn't know or how it was going to we're just afraid to have a kid or whatever. It's okay. Yeah, Let ex- it go. Exactly. Well, free you, yourself. You're the one who's a little on the on the fence of like maybe we shouldn't have. Yeah, an lately it's been going through my mind. Yeah, I can. I, I feel. Go do yeah. your wills. That's important. No, I don't want to talk about that. I'm. I, I, we're superstitious. <laughs> I'm gonna you gotta leave do it, it all Ta-ta. to the animals. You gotta. Well, you have to, you have to write a will to leave it to the I animals. Know. <laughs> I know it's true, right? Yeah. Like uh, Helmsley, Leon Helmsley left but it all. But that could bring up a lot God. of arguments oh with your spouse, don't you think? Like, did you have a lot of arguments? No, no. you guys were cool. Yeah. Yeah. yeah well, Jim and I did ours. He's I have like, to I want to leave it all to my cousin, and you're like, no, I want to leave it all to my. No. You gotta Unless do you it. Got, did you do this before you got married? Did you do like a? No. Okay. Well. No. No. We're yeah. all combined. Okay. But you got you got everything talk about we have it. is one. We built it together. All right. Well, we then burn it, it together. All right. Well, then we'll go out together like that. And we're so. going out together. Okay. Taking it with us in the ground. But one of you is and mo- money trees will grow. <laughs> Most likely, one of you is going to outlive the other, so the decisions have to be made. <laughs> <laughs> you know that movie, The Notebook? Look, she's nervous because you're doing this. No, no, no. I'm just thinking about the, you know, the movie, The Notebook? Yes. Yeah. So how he lay in bed with her. Well, that's what my husband wants to do. He wants He's going to kill himself? He wants to live. He wants to go together. Okay. <laughs> that That is, <laughs> but we will be able to do that. I right? mean, the the one decision they are letting us freaking make is commit suicide. We can kill ourselves. Oh, God. Yeah, right? No, you can't. No, yeah. but the, the, you know what makes me nervous? The thought of dying because now as I'm getting older, I'm really thinking about mortality a lot more. On the, the next time, episode. On the, the next time, episode. Right? That's, yeah. honey, that's, that's what, what gets me nervous. That's more a, than anything. We're at that age, babe. This is what we talk because about. Because you think right. 10 years ago you were like, you know, 30-something, 40-something. Look how fast that went. Hmm? It goes faster and faster. So, yeah, get your wills done if you're over 50, even mm-hmm. if you're in your 40s, or once yes, you get married. Yes, yeah. yes. or you're not, Because Jim and I aren't even married, but I mean, he's actually in, well, hopefully by the time this episode airs, he's actually in Iowa, um, and his mom review, r- revises their will, the will regularly. This is great. Listen to this. And even though we, you know, we're, we're kind of common-law married now, because we've been together almost 10 years, yeah. so she's making me Jim's beneficiary should he not outlive her so should he die in a fiery crash on the way back from iowa <laughs> instead of leaving it to her other children i become jim i'm jim's that's beneficiary amazing. yeah See, these are good things to know that's that's amazing. Don't be very, you're very lucky don't girl. be afraid and don't be don't be superstitious yeah it really. actually it'll take a l- big load off well you. it does open up everything like saying oh well i didn't have kids and and then i'm worried about mortality and like you know my oh, mom died in her 50s all so. Right, so this is a good Woo. this is all good you know? stuff to think about right yeah so you should definitely hopefully yeah. this conversation will in, it's a, you know, it's a, that's what makes me very a nervous, catalyst. the mortality thing and thinking of my mom passing and okay. being so, very healthy, you know, so that's a big thing. Yeah, but you, you know, more people get hit by a truck than you realize. That's true. <laughs> that's true. Speaking of our previous bitch fest about traffic. <laughs> but you do think about mortality at this age. Yes, you do. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. That's why we're doing our wills. So uh, to wrap this episode up, we need to do our wills, ladies. I know it's an uncomfortable situation, but you, you know you've got to be responsible about it. We've talked about abortion, and we've talked about not not having children or willingly not have children or not willingly not have children. How do we say that? Not willingly, not have children. Uh, yeah. Be what? child free. Try child free, free, man. Yeah. Or child full. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Whatever, however you want it. So you look, yeah. at, this, at this age, you make your own rules. 
That's what I say. Right? After 40, we write our own rules. <laughs> All right. Well, that wraps it up for this very long episode. That was supposed to be a short episode. <laughs> I said, Trevor, come on. Right, right. right. There's going to be a part there one and no two. short episode with me ever, <laughs> ever. We said this was going to be a short episode, but this might be I a two-parter. Right. All right. Uh, fine-tuned females, please, we love to hear what you have to say. So write your comments below. We definitely want to know your opinions, whether you agree with us or disagree with us. It's all okay. No judgment. It's a no judgment zone. Yes. And we'll see you next time. All right. Ciao. Bye. Okay. Oh, it's-